All right, everybody, we're going to talk about yesterday's uh, practice FRQ. So um, lots going on here, um, but it's a really nice, you know, fully uh, cumulative example. So we're talking about the, op the economy operating at less than full employment. So that's going to tell us that this is in a recessionary gap. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's think about how we're going to graph that. So on the main aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph, we want to show these three items. So here is our main aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph. So we got price level here and real GDP here. So we want to full, show the full employment output. We show that by our vertical line at LRAS. And then our current output, which we know is recessionary, and our current price level. So we're going to have our upsloping SRAS and our downsloping AD. And notice that uh, this equilibrium is to the left of LRAS. Okay, so this, it, and they don't tell us that, you know, usually this is an old question from like 2004, um, but they would say label current output you know, QR and PLR or something that would usually give you a, a name. They used to not do that, but now they do. So PLR and QR. So now we have our recessionary gap. All right, so that is uh, all we need for A. Now, identify an open market operation that could restore full employment in the short run. So open market operations, were one, so we know this is monetary policy, and open market operations only has one option. You can either buy bonds or sell bonds, but all the other aspects of fiscal or monetary policy that are, that are stimulatory, that are expansionary or contractionary, that is not what we're talking about here. So for part B, we can either buy or sell, and which one is going to put cash in. So we want the cash to go up in the economy, and uh, the Fed does that by buying bonds. So the Fed will buy bonds, and, uh, and that will help restore full employment. So correctly label graph of the money market show how buying bonds uh, affects the interest rate in the short run. So now let's draw the money market. So new graph, okay, and we have Q money here and interest rate here. We know that the supply of money is vertical where the Fed sets it, and we know that demand for money is down sloping. We remember that's just the regular money market graph. So when we buy bonds and we increase the money supply, SM1, we're going to have this movement, which means that our interest rate is going to fall. Okay, so IR will fall, and then you're good. All right, on to part D. Explain how the change in the interest rate will affect aggregate demand. Um, okay, so for D, AD will rise because interest rate sensitive spending will rise because IR, the interest rate, went down. So you could certainly talk about capital stock here. Um, that's IG, you know, but then also you've got interest rate sensitive consumer spending, which we know is a little bit smaller, but um, you know, IG is very heavily influenced by this. Um, but consumer spending is less influenced, um, but influenced nonetheless. All right, so now this one's a little bit weird. They probably wouldn't have you do this anymore where they go back and have you further complicate the graph. So I'm gonna switch colors. Um, but on the graph in part A, how will the change in the interest rate you identified in C affect output and price level? So what it's going to do is shift, we said that AD would go up, so we'll shift to AD1 and output will rise. Um, so output will rise and the price level will rise. Okay, so you can do that with these two arrows. Um, now let's go on to the last part. Instead of open market operations in B, so instead of doing some sort of expansionary uh, monetary policy, suppose that no policy actions take place, um, and then assume flexible prices and wages. So this is their way of saying what would happen if we took a classical economic approach, right? If we left the economy alone. Um, so uh, we're going to write F, I, and... Short run aggregate supply will shift to the right. Okay, it's doing that because um, resource prices will fall. Okay, so you don't have to say that. Um, I don't think. Instead, suppose. Oh, explain. Oh, sorry. Yes, we do. So it does say explain. So we need a what and a why. So SRA will shift to the right 
because um, resource prices, resource prices, which are primarily wages and raw materials, will fall. Okay, so that, you know, basically if nobody's buying things, then in order to make people buy things, then they have to lower prices. So that's how that happens. And then F2, um, the output and price level. So um, output will rise because SRAS shifts right and PL will fall for same. So you do not have to, to show this. Um, you don't have to, to do it. You could, and I'm going to do it just to make sure that you guys understand. So um, we've got the same recessionary gap that we were talking about before. SRAS, AD, uh, LRAS here, PL, real GDP. Okay, um, so now we're going to switch colors. And basically, if you do nothing, then SRAS will shift to the right, which means that price level will fall and output will rise. So that's the, the classical way that, in the, that uh, a recession works itself out. Thank you very much. Nice cumulative SRP, uh, FRQ. Take care, guys.